astonishing. Here we have a small group of wildebeest coming down from the completely opposite side of the river from the one that we were looking at earlier. You can see those cars in the background there. And these chaps look to be about to cross. I mean, I, I can't believe that it's this easy. Come on, chaps. Good luck. It's quite cold this morning, so I think with any luck, those beastly crocodiles will be out of the way. Small group, I think. I don't think it's much bigger than the group that you can see there. Not easy for them. Slippery and slidey in the rapids. Oh, it just looks so uncomfortable. Oof. And how they don't injure themselves badly, I don't know. Anyway, they're doing fine. They'll get across. Barring some severe mishap, they'll be fine. And I know to sensitive viewers who love... Ooh, there's a big crocodile just floating into, street, into shot there. Is he going to have a go? He seems to be struggling as much with the rapids <laughs> as the others do. Oh, he's going to have a go. At that little one. No, he's not. Come on, chaps, get out the water. Go on. You've done so well. Now, you see, I've seen crocodiles react much more enthusiastically to a potential crossing than that. And I wonder if the rapids and the temperature aren't having something to do with it. There we go. They've all made it across. Let's just have a look and see if there aren't any further ones here. There don't seem to be, and then we'll zoom back in towards where that other crossing is threatening to happen at Main South. Let me speed up the zoom a little bit. Jim, do you want to know if there are crossings that Thompson's gazelles will avoid due to the water currents? Um, I'm not sure. I've certainly seen them cross at this very crossing, and I think this is the most, uh, well, for them, they're out of their depths completely in a crossing like this. And, uh, well, yeah, I, I, don't, I doubt it, James. I think you might find that they prefer to swim and walk on the ground because they're so little, but, of course, that makes them extremely vulnerable. So let's watch during the season. We'll be able to figure that out if there are some that they do seem to avoid. Remember, the big herds of Thompson's gazelles still coming up behind the wildebeest, so they are going to take a little while to get here. I can't see anything further there. Let's just look up onto the bank, see if we can get through the, well, what can only be described as a, as Scott was saying, Monday morning traffic jam of vehicles. Let's see if we can't just look through. Yeah, there they are. And you see between those two cars, you can see a herd moving there. Now moving the other way, with any luck coming down towards the main north crossing, perhaps perhaps inspired by their friends who've just done it, who will go and say to them, fear not, fellows, come this way, we'll make it. Although, what reason they'll give for possibly trying to make it, well, that's anyone's guess. Marco, I agree with you. So the crossings need traffic lights. They need traffic lights. And they, what they most need, Marco, is somebody with a very large stick and the authority to beat imbeciles over the head with it. Because the maniacal and uh, hooligan behavior by the human beings at these crossings sometimes takes one's breath away. In fact, it was not... It was just yesterday that Scott Dyson saw somebody, and I make not this up, land an aeroplane on a road. In other words, they issued the airstrip and they landed on a road that was relatively straight. I mean, there's some serious cowboy behavior in this area. Right, let us head across to Brent. I would say he's probably about 10 minutes from getting to these crossing points.